Elon Musk doing a form of this. Einstein did a form of this. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism <laughs> is to get say it again and again and again, which is that dopamine that arrives without prior effort destroys people. When I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. Uh, so I'm going to get sunlight in my eyes for the, you know, I'll probably go into the grave saying this. So forgive me if people have heard me say this before, but the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism <laughs> is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. Um, if you live in a cloudy area, if you're in the UK in the winter or the summer, maybe you resort to some artificial light as a replacement, but as much as one can get bright, natural, and if not natural, artificial light in your eyes early in the day without sunglasses, contacts and eyeglasses are fine. Don't try and do it through a window or windshield. It's going to take far too long. This sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. And yes, ideally that would be a walk, but sometimes we'll just go into the yard and have some coffee and, and you know, soak in whatever sunlight through, through the clouds. If it's a cloudy overcast day, it might be 20, 30 minutes. If it's a um, it's a very bright day. It might just be a few minutes, but really the, the quality studies on humans that have looked at this say, try and get as much natural light as you can in the morning hours, whenever it is that that is for you, especially the first three hours after waking. If you can work outside, great. If you can get near a window, because as opposed to just in a dark conference room, that's better. But if you can get outside, that would be fantastic. So I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media, and to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I am I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day, one, and one physically hard thing a day. Now, it does not extreme physical, not David Goggins level workouts or anything, but um, in that 90 minutes, I'll typically try and read a research article start to finish, or I'll work on a document that I might be doing a grant or research paper or planning a podcast or researching a podcast. I try and get my brain into kind of a linear mode. I try and narrow that aperture. Because if I don't, the distraction that's created by social media and interactions with others can kind of wick out into the rest of the day. So I'm not necessarily trying to finish something in that time, but I try and do something challenging. I experience great pleasure from battling through something mentally challenging. But that's something that I built up since my university years when I was about you know 19 or so, got serious about school and really started to experience the, the deep pleasure of like, oh, I figured that out or like, that was really tough. I don't always succeed, but that's what I'm doing in that hour to 90 minutes. But I confess sometimes we'll take a walk during that time and maybe talk through some things that are, that are challenging, you know, or, or Sometimes I get lazy and, and I, I'll miss a day of that cognitive challenge. Then I do caffeine about um, 90 to 120 minutes um, after waking. And even though I prefer to work out earlier, I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. I have a very consistent routine. I've done it for 30 years where I weight train for 45 or f minutes to an hour every other day. And occasionally I take an extra day off mm. and occasionally due to travel or other commitments, I'll occasionally double up two days and then take two days off. Yep. So it's really boring, you know, talk about workout schedules, but it's really simple. It's like, you know, I'll do a, a kind of pushing day, rest, pulling day, upper body, push up, rest, upper body, pull, rest, and then legs take two days off, something like that, or skipping rope. Those are my favorite forms of cardio, sometimes swimming, but typically I'll go running for 30 to 45 minutes. Or if I'm feeling a little bit lazier, because I always find the high intensity stuff to be easier than the long drawn out stuff. I'll sometimes throw on a, a weight vest, a 30 or 50 pound weight vest, and I'll go out for a shorter run. Or I'll, I'm a big fan of knees over toes. Occasionally um, do a backwards you know, hill walk um, or throw on the weight vest for that. Um, we sometimes will get bands and we'll tap. So there's a great way to combine this. We will sometimes get two people in one of these thick bands, do hill walks in the morning while getting our sunlight, Yep. As, but that I don't really consider a workout. I consider that just kind of rehabilitate us at movement. So yep. I'm, on the off days, I'm doing cardio. And sometimes that's in the morning. Sometimes that's in the evening. I do not like to weight train in the second half of the day because I like to be really caffeinated when I weight train. I like to listen to loud, fast music. Most of the time, not always. I keep my phone out 
or off of for most workouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Podcasts maybe if I'm running, yep. but I really try hard when I'm working out to just focus on the workout. And those workouts, the weight training workouts are always 10 minutes or so of warm up, and then no more than 40 to 50 minutes of really hard work. If I do train hard any longer, I don't recover enough to be able to come in a few days later. And when I train that way, I generally make pretty consistent progress. I'll eat my first real meal. Now, occasionally I'll wake up really hungry if I didn't eat that well the night before. Yeah. But typically, the after I train, I yeah, I'll eat. I like oatmeal after I train. Oatmeal, fruit, some fish oil, protein drink, and then maybe 90 to 120 minutes after that, I'll have a real lunch. My lunch is pretty much the biggest meal of the day. If I have my way, it'll be a steak, a salad, maybe a little more starch. Although I sort of got it earlier. Yep. Um, Brazil nuts. And that meal sometimes can extend longer than I'll eat. And then I confess I usually will work a little bit more for about 30 minutes or an hour, typically email. And then I'll take a um, 10 to 30 minute yoga nidra nap or a nap mm -hmm. and then come back refreshed. Occasionally, do, if the nap is early enough in the day, afterwards I'll have a, you know, a nice double espresso mm. and get back into work. That's the hardest part of the day, actually. If I was well structured in the early part of the day, it's that 2 or 3 p.m. The key is then to try and get something really useful done cognitively again. So some people might look at this and say, wait, you're working for an hour in the morning and 30 minutes here and an hour in the afternoon. When are you actually working? But it's really about the depth of the trench when you're working. And so if I'm going to drop into something again for a few hours in the afternoon, I'm really going to drop into it. And that's typically phone off and out of the room. And my goal is to get to the evening time so that I can do the things that I want in the yep. evening. Yep. I can enjoy, like I'm always setting a goal of the next time block. So this is something I've been doing for a long time, but even more so lately. I don't think my goal in the next hour is to do blank. I think this is dopamine uh, reward predictions uh, in action. I think, okay, if I get this workout done, then I'll be able to eat at more or less the same time, which I enjoy, and then something else will happen. So I'm very focused on what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for the purposes of like opening up the next door to the next thing. So if I can get that afternoon work block done, I'm thinking, ah, oh, if I can just really get this podcast recorded, yeah. which I enjoy, I experience so much pleasure from spending a week or two researching something and then putting some structure on. It. And as you know, I mean, podcasting is its own, its own sort of natural drug. Uh, it just feels good if you enjoy doing this sort of thing. Um, so typically we'll be starting late in the day now and going till pretty late. And listen, this adrenaline thing, this dopamine thing is no joke. This is the stuff of human evolution, right? This is the, these are the same neurochemicals. This is the, this is the energy drink of human evolution. This is, this is not the rock star, Red Bull, etc. That stuff just hijacks this very system. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just feeding this very same system. So if you find an eating schedule or a fasting schedule that allows you to tap into that as a resource, oof, I don't care what anyone says about whether or not fasting will make you live longer or not. Who knows, right? Who, if you're in the control group, you know what's going to happen. So, but everyone, presumably everyone dies eventually. So pick your, pick your mode of eating, be my guest. But if you figured out a way to tap into this in a way that works for you, by all means, leverage that. Because until somebody comes along and says that intermittent fasting is unhealthy, well, then to me, it seems, at least for me, eating between 11 p.m., uh, excuse me, 11 a.m., ish and 8 p.m. ish is great. And what I can also tell you is that having a consistent meal schedule, meaning a feeding window, we absolutely know. I don't know why this isn't discussed more. We absolutely know that that helps anchor your sleep schedule and having a sl anchored sleep schedule helps anchor your light viewing schedule and a light viewing. So it all starts to, to piece together.